I'm having a grocery store episode of unable to find the exact thing that I want. Here's what I should start doing, organizing my grocery list. It's exactly why I like to do the order online groceries so that I don't have to hunt for everything. And the people who do the shopping already know where everything is. Getting close. Just need to find some of my dessert toppings. Yogurt and overnight oats are great ways to start your day and I have a little twist for those warmer months. Let's turn breakfast into a frozen treat. I'm gonna take some breakfast classics and turn them into popsicles. Time to grocery shop for all the recipes I'm prepping this week. Everything I need's right up front. These strawberries are huge. Look at these big old strawberries. Ginormous. Blueberries for sure. I love this grocery store. It's so well stocked, so wide open. Unsweet coconut flakes. Creek plain yogurt. Where are you? Right here. You just need some breakfast staples. I'm gonna start with some Greek yogurt. Sweeten things up with a little honey. Do, 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 do. Smooth it out. Always give a little taste to make sure everything's delicious. A little tart, just the way I like it. Keeping it pretty standard, just some strawberries and blueberries. This is infinitely customizable. Pick your favorite ingredients and just mix them in your yogurt. Everybody's happy. Boop, 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 boop. You can do as little or as much fruit as you'd like, as long as it fits in the popsicle molds. And usually you'd leave blueberries whole, but for these popsicles, you wanna give them a rough chop. Blueberries are much prettier whole, but trust me, these will look great in the popsicles. It's really simple. You can even add chia seeds or coconut flakes. Whatever you put in your normal yogurt parfait, you can put in here. This is so easy, but the only tricky part is not making a mess filling up these molds. These popsicles and have a little leftover for me right now. And for a little something extra, I'm gonna crush up some granola. Let's see if they have a loose granola. I don't want a granola bar. I want a bag of granola. So many options. That'll do just fine. Just a little on the top. Now we're putting the sword in the stone. These already look so cool. Well, they've gotta be frozen first. And a little breakfast for now, since I'm waiting on those. Can you hear me over the blender? This is one of my favorite go-to places. I actually haven't been in a while. And this is a new location. I'm in a different area, so I haven't been to this one, but grabbing these green juices, smoothies, used to be a go-to for me. All my favorite flavors, wrapped up in the one. So good. Here's a variation with oats, which I think we already have this at the house, but. <laughs> shake me. Please don't shake me. Ooh, the good maple syrup. We're getting the good stuff today. Just wanna grind up those oats a little bit. Add in some oat milk. I'm a big fan of blueberries. Some banana, a little bit of maple syrup for sweetness. I like to sneak a little vanilla in there. Dash of cinnamon. Is that a dash? Looks like a dash to me. Who knows how much dash is? Start your engines. Make sure everything's well combined. Blending blueberries makes such a fun color. Deep blue, grayish. Oh my goodness, I made enough. Look at that, spot on. And just for fun, some shredded coconut. I am making a mess. Ah, I got some in my face. Cap things off and get them in the freezer. Let's sickle these pops. Overnight's best, but check them in a couple hours. You can make just about any of your favorite smoothie recipes and turn it into a breakfast popsicle. These are really fun and easy. You can even add in your favorite nut and seed butters and even protein. You can even add some more sweetness and sprinkle on some coconut or granola. These would make a great breakfast treat for kids or a fun surprise if you're hosting a brunch. It kind of feels wrong like you're having ice cream for breakfast, but it's completely healthy and fine. Ooh, coffee ice cream. We all know that I love some coffee ice cream. Okay, I'll just get a basic ice cream. Homemade vanilla. Today we're going to Bell. Since for me, I can't have regular ice cream, we're going non-dairy variety. When I was a kid, I used to love ordering fried ice cream because ice cream fried, really? But it's a lot of work to take good old ice cream and throw it into hot grease. Let's no fry some fried ice cream. Ice cream's great on its own and Sunday bars are even better, but this is just a fun twist to add some crunch to your ice cream. Perfect way to use that last little bit of cereal. I also love to do this with different flavors of ice cream and non-dairy varieties. Let's start with your favorite cereal. Take your pick, any cereal will do. Growing up, this is my favorite cereal right here. Tears the roof of your mouth up, but it's so good. 
So my genius idea was to get a variety pack of small cereal boxes, which I know they have. This grocery store doesn't have the mini boxes of cereal, which is what I really wanted. Cinnamon Toast Crunch featuring the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, please. The family size is so big. We need a lot of flakes on our sheet tray. This dessert is very hands-on. Get in there and crush it up. You still want some texture, so not too fine. Plop down a like it size scoop. Coat it in that cereal, just like we're bread and chicken nuggies. You wanna press the cereal in and shape it into a ball. Try not to use your hands too much to avoid melting the ice cream. You'll also wanna work quick or in small batches to keep that ice cream firm. I like a cinnamon sugar cereal for those churro vibes. These are really big pieces, so crunch them up real good. Hey, mix cereals, go crazy. This is why it needs to be crunched up a lot, cause those big pieces don't stick as well. Cinnamon toast fingers. The captain's back from that Coachella party and ready to work. If you've never crushed Captain Crunch in your fingers, it feels just like it does in your mouth. This is definitely a firm cereal. Get out of there, come on, there you go. Making a little bit of a mess is a good time. This one's melting, it's very soft. Into the freezer, we must go. Lightly cover and freeze until solid again. These really don't need that long in the freezer. You wanna keep that coating crunchy and have fun with the toppings. Here's my dilemma. Do I make whipped cream or do I just buy the canned stuff? I'm gonna buy the canned stuff just to make this time easy. Extra creamy? I haven't used this stuff in forever, so it's just for fun. We're just going canned stuff today. Big question, is this a fork or a spoon operation? I'll just try both. Can I do the cucumber tomato? Never know what sauce to pick. I love this place so much. My obsession with it has tapered off a little bit because I used to have this like two times a week, which got a little excessive, but I love these kind of flavors. It's like so fresh. Mediterranean food is one of the best. And sometimes it looks like a hot mess because you get all these ingredients, all these sauces put together, it's so good. Things are heating up outside. Don't fuel that fire inside by using the stove or the oven. During those warm months, let's choose no-cook meals instead. Here's a tasty twist to ceviche. Ceviche is an old school no-cook meal where citrus cooks raw seafood. But for most home cooks, that's not the most approachable recipe. So we're going pre-cooked as an easy grocery store shortcut. I'm creating a Mediterranean variation using some parsley and katamata olives for a twist. Just checking my list, I did not get everything I need, so yet another grocery store to get the rest of my items. Jeez, that's a big cucumber. Nice fresh herbs. Much fresher. Squeeze your tomatoes, make sure they're not too soft. Plenty of citrus. Every time I forget my reusable produce bags, every time. I always feel guilty when I forget my reusable produce bags, my grocery bags. But I do recycle and reuse the grocery bags in these bags, so try not to feel too bad. <laughs> this knife is like butter. Oh my goodness. Play some music, stream something, and relax and shop. For this recipe, you'll want to remove those seeds to reduce the amount of liquid in the ceviche. You can do this with your fingers, a spoon, or carefully with a knife. When you make this, you want everything uniformly diced. Most people don't have the knife skills, so a chopper really comes in handy. Even though I'm here for one simple thing, it's Target, so you never know. You might end up with 10 things, even though you came for one. This is it, this is what I wanted. Here's the challenge, which one to get? Ooh, this one does large and fine. I think this one only does fine, that large dice. I don't mean this negatively, I'm just confused. 1% for the planet? I feel like we could do better than 1%. Large and small dice. I think I'm gonna get this one because this one has two cutting blades. This one just has one. Sticking with my one purchase and I'm walking out of this store with my eyes closed now. I shall not be tempted by this other merchandise. Ooh, what's this? I want it. It's quite the noise. I'm just telling everybody I did this by hand. I really did, I'm using my hands. Look at these nicely, evenly diced tomatoes. 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 Cucumber. That's satisfying. Red onion. The main star of ceviche is the citrus. Oh yeah. Between chopping and squeezing, this is a good workout. Parsley. Just some 
roughly chopped herbs here. Looking so fresh, looking so good. I'm adding some roughly chopped Katamata olives. I like a little fresh orange juice in there just to add a bit of sweetness. And if you're feeling up to it, never shy away from adding that zest too. Just give this all a good mix. Look at my perfect chopping. I did it all by hand, all myself. I'm adding shrimp into this recipe, but you can use any protein you want, even some packaged tuna. They have all these flavors, all these flavored varieties. I just want something simple. I'm gonna stick with what I know I need. If you're not a seafood fan and still wanna keep it no cook, just pick up a rotisserie chicken. All the cooking's done for you. It's like a refreshing salad, shrimp cocktail, all in one. Add that shrimp right in. I like the large dice, but you can of course chop that shrimp up smaller. Season all that to taste. Get everything incorporated. Always give a little taste test. That is perfect. This is great to eat right away, or you can cover it, store it in the refrigerator, and let all those flavors marry. A little fresh mint right before serving. I love this with pita chips, or as a wrap, or over fresh greens as a salad. Camera eats first, then it's my turn. Mega sushi roll with the Cheeto dust. So extreme. Look at this thing. That's incredible. I've always loved poke bars because it's the variety of like toppings and ingredients. It's so good. And I'm such a sushi fan, especially during the summer. Sushi just hits the spot in hot weather. Some of my favorite no-cook meals are sushi or poke bowls, but those can be really challenging to make at home. Another option that's easy and fun to make is onigiri, which is basically a stuffed rice snack. Here's a new snack that's fun to make at home. You'll need some sticky rice, which I usually have left over in the fridge, but even making a batch of rice for this can hardly be considered cooking. You can even ask your local sushi restaurant just for the sushi rice. Okay, a little bit of a cheat, but they have the sticky rice pre-made. That's gonna help a lot. There are so many variations of onigiri, but we're gonna keep things classic and simple. Wet your hands so the rice doesn't stick. Take your sticky rice. You need about a half a cup to start. A common filling is a tuna salad, but really you can't go wrong. There's also egg salad, chicken salad, really any kind of filling that sticks together works best. You can even try out a variety of vegetable fillings. Form a disc and make a little indent in the center. Add a small amount of your filling in the center. Gently shape everything into a little ball. Keep the integrity of those rice grains and don't mush them too much. These are mostly shaped in triangles, so cup your hands and form a little pyramid. Now that just gets wrapped in a little piece of that snack seaweed. I love the sheets of nori. Do they have the full sheets? <gasps> they do. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a selection. Let's try this out. Why not? You can find roasted seaweed snack sheets in just about any grocery store these days. But I like the full size sheets of nori and you can cut them to the right size. You can do this with a sharp knife or even scissors. Kitchen shears to the rescue. And just wrap it up. This one looks so cute. To store these, you can just use a little bit of plastic wrap. Just wrap the rice and keep the seaweed separate so it doesn't get too soggy. My favorite thing is experimenting in the kitchen and trying new foods from different cultures. This is a process that may take a few tries to get the hang of it, but once you do, you'll wanna make these all the time. A little something different to add to that snack lineup. 